He's a conscientious Toastmaster who strives to enhance the Toastmaster experience for all members. And Danny will be presenting this session on digital, digital succession. At the end of the session, I'll unmute you all and we'd be delighted to hear any questions you have or experiences you have. I'm going to do the screen for you, Daniel, so if, I, if I'm moving a bit slow or whatever, do let me know, and um, but I'll try and move it as, as you need it. So over to you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Karen. Digital succession planning is probably something that many clubs don't really consciously think about. Maybe the VPPR, ingoing and outgoing, have a quick chat with each other, share accounts, that sort of thing. But I'd like to put the case that it should be taken a bit more seriously than that. So if we move on to the next slide. I think one of the important points to grasp about public relations, in particular digital public relations, is that it's very much a, a marathon rather than a sprint. And by that I mean you're trying with each generation of VPPR to build up momentum with editors, with followers, you're trying to tra create buzzes around your conversations, around your news. And if you get poor succession, basically the baton gets dropped and the next person has to try to make a cold start. And that loss of momentum to the club's PR effort can seriously undermine opportunities in the future. And at its worst, a, a failure in sort of succession planning will, will make the difference between whether the club's PR effort enjoys continuity and growth, whether it's stunted and contracted, or, or whether, in the worst cases, it tips things towards a spiral of closure. The difference between PR succession planning and not is whether or not the club's profile is vibrant or whether when people Google for your club all they find is a debris field of obsolete blogs, Twitter accounts, websites. Now to my own um, annoyance I stepped in to help my own area with one of their websites this year that had drifted into a protracted period of I'd say weak administration. I don't want to point fingers, it's endemic in the system. The person who was put in charge to administer it didn't particularly want the job, but the person who set the website up had left the area. So the situation was in the balance. And he kept things going, but he wasn't able to find the time to keep right up to date with the administration. I stepped in this year, and what you're looking at on the left is the website as it was intended to be, as the public should have seen it. What you see on the right is damage left by hackers who got onto the website on the 5th of November 2012. And they actually posted this hack attempt on the various hack sites around the world, boasting it, as you can see, the 5th of, 5th of November 2012, but 38 minutes past 10. So in all of that time, the website has lingered on in a damaged form. And that is a threat to reputation if you're going to let that happen. But there are other examples if you look around. Did Cambridge Speakers cease to have anything interesting to talk about itself when Susie Bloor was elected governor of Division G on 12th of May 2013? I'm pretty convinced that today that is a vibrant club, but if you were to Google it, you would get this impression. Next slide. Another one I found in, in, in the locality, and I'm not trying to blame clubs for these occurrences. I think it's endemic within the weaknesses that exist within succession within Toastmasters clubs. And this Ipswich electrifies speakers clubs, this particular blog website that you can Google up. They had nothing interesting to say about themselves after July the 25th, 2006. That's over 11 years ago. In reality, they're a lively and vibrant club. And another interesting ar artifact that I found was on Facebook. And this club had set up, or a member of this club had set up their Facebook as a 
extension of a personal profile and obviously the limits there in succession are, are obvious and they obviously found that out because they then had to come along subsequently and if you see the inserted clip set up a group so if we leave digital succession to chance We've got the risk of hacking and reputational damage. We're giving the impression that the party may have died. We're losing momentum and capability. We're losing opportunity. We're losing followers. And what's more, this hassle, frustration, and inconvenience is sapping a club of its most vital resource, leadership energy. I'm sure any of you who've been presidents and area directors, you really begin to appreciate your scarcest resources, the vitality of your committees and your leaders. And why direct their effort to solving problems from the past when they should really be pushing forward to the future? And what's more, it could be a waste of money. Because if you've invested in photo shoots, in artwork, and nobody can find that in the future, that's a loss of money. So what, what are digital assets? Well, obviously, we've got the social media channels, which you've seen examples of, and especially their content contents but also the audience bases that are following them they're all part of your assets your real estate then you have the email accounts and the contents there of those almost all correspondence now is is through email all audit trails of decisions and so forth and governance they go through email we also have some clubs with file depositories and their contents such as drop boxes we have clubs with websites Again, the content and the audiences that follow those. We have offline digital materials. We have artwork, we have photographs, we have templates, marketing templates, letter headers. And it's not just the VPPR. It also affects the banking, the membership, educational materials, We've got the PR, the sergeant at arms, the secretary, the executive. They're, they're all living in an increasingly digitalized world. That digital footprint is increasing. You know, we've got LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google, multiple email accounts, cloud-based photo sharing and storage, websites, blogs, bank accounts, cloud-based document and client files, shopping, maybe the clubs have got accounts linked, uh, got um, purchasing accounts linked to club credit cards. All of that information needs positive management rather than ad hoc, ad hoc handovers. So if we move on. If we step back from the problem and think about the challenges we have, the challenges of succession within committees are, are, are common. We have a lot of incapacitation due to life and very rarely death. And by life, I mean um, work takes over, work moves, family life, family life takes over. All of those things, and suddenly the people that you're relying on are no longer there in the picture. We can have breakdowns of goodwill within committees, especially you go back one. As we can have breakdowns of goodwill, and especially towards the end of terms, where people who perhaps came into the post reluctantly have already mentally moved on, and occasionally we have episodes of hostility. And another key challenge to succession is what happens if you can't identify a successor within your tenure. Let me move on. And then another challenge of succession is the, is, the, is the basic knowledge transfer between any two individuals who've got wide variations in skill sets and motivations. We can often end up within clubs with vast accumulations of unwritten tacit knowledge, often in a, a very few bedtime, bedrock long-term members. And getting this knowledge to transfer to newer members is a significant challenge. And often we find we have precious little of anyone's time and attention and opportunities to meet up to facilitate knowledge transfer. So if we move on, and if that, that was not enough challenges to do with uh, succession planning, there are challenges to do with the ownership of digital assets. If you consider the hardware, I bet there are very few clubs that issue their officers with digital devices almost all of the digital devices will be privately owned. For example, the computers, the laptops, the cameras, the data drives, the DVDs, the tablets, the smartphones. These are where the digital assets reside, but the clubs don't own them. 
Similarly, with online and email accounts, when these accounts were created, were they registered as business accounts such that the club has some form of corporate ownership over them? No, more likely they were registered as personal accounts. And so the club has very little legal standing to reclaim an account of anyone. And similarly, with the services that we enjoy, be it Facebook, be it email hosting, um, that we use to access our, our contents, these digital assets, most of these are actually only lifetime leases or lifetime licenses. We don't actually have any physical ownership of that mechanism. So one of the best ideas I've come across for having much better digital succession is to conceptualize a problem as a written digital will, if you wish. And within those wills, you'll be looking for an inventory of the club's digital assets. So where are the photos stored? Where are the artwork? Where is the artwork stored? Where are the templates stored? Where are the minutes of meetings stored? All of that sort of thing, inventorized. And also you could consider the authority, the passwords that would help someone else get in. And also within a written digital world, we actually need the plans for, for a succession. These include the tacit knowledge, availability of backups that ex exist, um, the ways that these digital assets are put to work. And finally, we need to consider who is it that's expected in the event of incapacitation to step in and sort this out. And pragmatically, the challenge any club will find is keeping up to date with respect to the new platforms that are coming along. I mean, is Eventbrite added this year or Meetup next year? And so on and so forth. And then you'll find that another one is that individuals, when they store documents in Dropboxes, when they upload contents, tend to have a very on the hoof filing system that can be very hard for a third party to um, follow. And finally, with all of social media accounts, if you're anything like me, you, you um, are maxed out with passwords and so you're forever going through forget and reset cycles. So every time I log on to a website, I have to go back and reset my password. So within the inventory and authority aspects of this, this digital will, within the inventory, we're obviously looking for a list of the key digital asset contents. We're looking for the methods and points so of access these are the services we would access them, say so the Dropbox. And we would also be looking in that will for the planned methods of transferability or termination. We've got that research done in advance. How is it the mechanism that you would transfer a Gmail from one owner to another? Also in the concept of authority, we're looking for usernames registered emails and associated mobile phone numbers, especially with accounts with the sort of dual mechanism of validation. Also looking for passwords and answers to secret questions. But we've always got to think that because there's such a blur between privately held assets and sort of the, the club as a whole, that privacy and security can touch in on um, pe people's sort of personal use of the internet. So we've got to try to make sure that security and passwords don't leak into the wrong hands. And this is one example I've pulled off of an inventory I put together of the digital assets that are around me. I, I'm in Division G. And I did a Google scan and Facebook scan and found every club's digital media channels and listed them all out. And I'm just showing you in my own area and in particularly my club at Cranfield, the kind of assets that we've got out there at the moment, the, the social media channels. And if you look towards the bottom three, I've put the word zombie at the end. And that is an asset that we've got out there in the public domain, but nobody is currently maintaining it. And it's something that I will need to address in the future. So move on. Right, so the succession plan and the ex executives within this, this will concept. And some of the questions you need to think about asking, what, what are the protocols and complexities of working these digital assets? What are the workflows? So for example, if you take a club meeting 
Um, who takes the photographs? Who does a narrative write-up of that meeting? Is it the secretary that puts both of those together, and passes them on to the VPPR, who then publishes them up to various social media channels? So how does it all work? Another question you want to ask yourself is, how do people name their files and folders? How could a third party possibly follow that? Are the folders organized by date or are they organized by event, etc., etc.? Are the files named in a way that somebody could follow or are they just random digital numbers from the camera? These are important questions. And, and also part of this succession planning, if you can think ahead um, as a VPPR to what you think should be transferred forward and perhaps what could be terminated if need be because you've only developed it as a speculative sideline. What, what are the key priorities for succession? And some of the other considerations down to the bottom is think about, well, who is it that if I was incapacitated tomorrow could step in and do this in the event of a succession failure? Who is it in the club that could take on these various parts of the portfolio? So these are the sorts of questions you ask yourself. And the more you've prepared this, the, the more you are covered against eventualities. And so to pull it all together now into a checklist, one of the things I'd suggest you do for each club is to identify what your key digital assets are, locate and track them. And by track them, I mean keep that list up to date as things move, as things get changed around, as new platforms open up, as files get reorganized. Similarly, keep track of the access information. Work out what the value of the digital assets are to the club and what, what you need to prioritize to protect. Then you need to consider the de determination of transferability as well as developing a disposition plan as you move forward through various successions in the committee. And above all with this plan, you need to inform stakeholders of the plan. They all need to know where it is if they need to refer to it quickly. And finally, don't forget to keep it under review and maintain it up to date. And I think if clubs thought like that, then they would go a long way towards protecting their core digital real estate and ensuring smooth successions, smooth planned successions. So some further tips. I think you've got to think about not being personal with your use of emails and things like that, but trying to institutionalize it into more of a business-minded way of thinking. So register a club Hotmail account or Yoohoo or Gmail, and then use that to register the social media channels for the club. Because if the emails are handed over correctly, then the passwords of everything else is recoverable back to the president, potentially. Similarly, if you set up Facebook and LinkedIn, set them up as pages and groups with multiple administrators rather than as personal pages, because with multiple administrators, you've got buffers in there against the unexpected loss of one of them because the remaining administrators can then invite other people in and maintain continuity. See our next one? So if you do end up with a rather bad legacy threat to your reputation, such as a hacked website you can no longer get into to deal with, um, well, one way to deal with that particular example is to stop funding it, but a, a dead and dormant Twitter account is quite common. One thing you can do is obviously try to regain the access and update and or make it timeless and by make it timeless I mean put a static front page up on a blog site that has the factual information about the club that doesn't change rather than a newsy front page which seems out of date quite quickly or you could choose to remove it from the web altogether but if you do consider removing it there are web, web archiving services and I'll show you one in a second that uh, you can use before you do remove it. Another tactic you can apply if you do have um, redundant social media accounts out there that you can't get into close down is to set up something that's competitive. Set up something that's very similarly named like this is the official Cranfield Speakers Club account rather than the Club Field Speakers Club account. Something like that. Very close. But above all make that really exciting, really dynamic so that the world gets to that preferentially over the old channel and in that way you will tend to dilute the, the damage of a, an old asset. 
this is the archiving service that, that I believe is available to the public free of charge. It's the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive. And within this, as you can see, if you go a bit to the bottom right, it's a bit clipped, you can actually upload uh, web links that will be saved onto their servers and it will be captured for posterity. So if you wanted to go back and see the write-ups about your launch event 10 years ago, but you've since lost the website, you could still have it there. That doesn't negate backing it up onto a, a zip drive or a Dropbox or other means, but this is, the Wayback Machine is definitely one way of creating a snapshot of the, web, of the website, of the web, as it was at one point in time. It's moving on. So, to summarize it, Toastmasters can accidentally leave significant digital debris in the public domain, and most of that is due to the uh, the very sort of grey areas of of the ownership of social media channels. Are they business? Are they are they personal? They're caught somewhere between in between for for social organisations, and part of it is to do with some of the weaknesses we have within our own succession models. And the rate of digitalization of life and the diversification of different assets and services, this is accelerating. And we need to try to be where the public are with our messages. So we're almost definitely caught into this expanding problem of digital legacy and digital footprint. I'd consider digital succession and planning as important as banking to a club. Thus, it's a strategic responsibility for all, rather than something that's left to a casual conversation between club officers. And overall, I would, might conclude that prevention is far better than cure. If you can try to adopt business-like procedures in the establishment of social media accounts and backing them up, you'll be in a much stronger position going forward. In addition, if your club officer's succession is, planning in a is planned in a business-like way, you'll obviously be much stronger. And above all, I suggest creating and maintaining a digital will for your club. Thank you. I think that concludes the presentation. Daniel, thank you so much for that information. There's a lot there for everybody to take in. I am recording this, so it will be available on the website on our d71toastmasters.org. So you can, you can regurgitate or look back on it yourselves later. I'm just going to let everybody, um, I'm going to take everybody off mute so you can ask Daniel questions. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So if you can't be heard, just raise your hand in case I haven't unmuted you. Has anybody got questions for Daniel? Lots to consider there. Uh, I, I have a question for Daniel, actually. I don't know if, 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 if Daniel will be able to answer it. It's Michael here from Society Toastmasters. Um, uh -huh. Hello, hello, Daniel. Uh, a fascinating presentation there of the importance of, of having a digital strategy for one's club. Going, going forward, you know, and in terms of succession. Um, is there any advice as regards content management and website management? Because I, we use that free toast host, but that's quite limited in what it, its capabilities. You know, it looks quite, it's kind of dated. Is there any sort of guidance from Toastmasters or Toastmasters International or anything in terms of, uh, you know, content management or creating a new website or something that's a bit more, you know, current, you know, that puts a better face on, on, on the on the club or, you know. Well, with, res with respect to tonight's presentation, what I would say about that question is that where you've got propriety platforms such as Free Toast Host, such as WordPress.com, I wanted to use that um, easy speak, the main advantage you get in there is that the technology behind those platforms and the security of those platforms is centrally administered and it's not left to chance um, within the succession um, plans of your club, the breakdowns of those plans. We've seen an example with MK Toastmasters that I showed earlier of what could happen if you're doing it 
all off your own back on a freestanding server with a freestanding set of software. If digital succession planning breaks down, you can be open to complications. It's six of one, half a dozen the other. You've got full creative license if you go it alone, but you've got the full responsibility of staying on top of the game if you do. That's true. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. All right. It's just, yeah, it, I find that I find free toast host is a bit tied down, but on the other hand, that's the advantage of being tied down is that it is centrally managed. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, Daniel, it's Elizabeth. I had a question. Is it okay to ask the question? Of course, Elizabeth. Off you go. Hello, neighbour. Hi. Um, excellent presentation. Uh, my question is this. Are you suggesting, Daniel, that is it, is it the role of the VPPR to reskill to be able to take on this digital role? Or are you suggesting we need a new role that focuses on this important digital um, area? I certainly think that... Um, if you were to propose preparing a digital world for a club, it should be led probably um, at the presidential level and it should involve contributions from all officers. So you do not. Hello? Uh, do a breakdown now. Here's Debbie. <laughs> Elizabeth, are you still there? I don't know what, what's happened to Elizabeth. Maybe she'll come back in when she gets herself reconnected. I, I think the gist of my answer is that I feel that um, having a, a digital plan for the club is a, a, a responsibility that, that is at the top of the executive. <laughs> What's going on there? There's a lot of background noise. I think you're definitely, if you're looking to start for a club and it hasn't been done before in a constructive way, the president, I suppose, you know, would definitely instigate it or get, a, get, get all the information from the various people on the committee and put it together. And I think that's probably the challenge, isn't it? Getting it all together initially, knowing where it is, and then hopefully passing it over then the succession should be easier. Yes, I think, I, think, I think it is a challenge to get started on the right foot, but once you get it going as a habit, it should hopefully roll along quite smoothly. Yeah, it's just, yeah just another point here, Michael back again. Uh, thinking about all this digital strategy with the club, it's kind of, we seem to be moving a little bit closer into a VLE environment, aren't we, with Toastmasters, a sort of a virtual learning environment, certainly with the pathways and that kind of area, you know, in terms of uh, people uh, progressing through their progressing through their awards. Uh, yes. Do you have any opinions on that? Well, the, the, the big thing that we should benefit from by being part of the Pathways Base Camp, which is the virtual learning environment, is that once the system is running smoothly, the evidence for our educational progression and awards will be centrally held and backed up. Mm. There have, I can point, well, another point fingers, I, I don't really want to, to do that tonight, but I can say I've heard of examples where clubs that held manual records of educational progress um, lost those records momentarily or for a long time when VPEs gave up and moved away. So there are advantages to having a well-managed centralized system. It won't cover everything we need, but evidence of educational advancement is a key feature of Toastmasters. If we lost that, then a lot of members would be very upset. So it's, it's probably for the good. Mm, true, true, yeah. I suppose it's, it's central to the viability of it as well, like, you know, that you have that record, that digital record of all the members and, and how far they've progressed, etc. Yeah. In on easy speak, we have um, fairly good records that help the clubs 
monitor the progression of their members. But I think that's been pointed out as far as Toastmasters International is concerned. Easy Speak doesn't constitute an official record of anything. Um, it's just a, a tool to help the clubs keep that information together. Precisely, it's a very it's a very good management system in, in its own way. It's, it's an excellent piece of, of, of a software a portal for, for, for club management and, and membership management. We just recently moved to it ourselves. We know it's been it's been in existence for the past what nearly a decade now, I think, hasn't it? You know, they're supposed to be doing it for pathways, aren't they? Well, there's talk of it anyway, like you know, to manage the pathway problems. I think Easy, Easy Speak will support pathways, but I think we'll always have clubs. We'll always have yeah. club meetings, so that won't be lost. I think Alison there has had her hand up. Alison, can I pass over to you? Do you have a question for Daniel? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, very, very good presentation, Daniel. Um, I just have a comment more than a question, really. But I've just taken over as secretary as our, uh, from our local cancer research committee. And we had the problem with the fact that the chairperson had been there for about 20 years. And I've started succession planning now because she had all the information and most of the information was in her head and we have started now we created a generic email we linked uh, we created a dropbox we linked the two together the facebook play account is in my sister's name and now we've connected that as well to the generic email so it is as you said it's very important to have all of those things that are in a way generic and that people can find you know can access them very easily in the future without having to go through people's private emails and private accounts for things, so I thought it was very, it was very good. Sounds like you're adopting many of the practices that I've identified as being helpful here. Yeah, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments for Daniel? Elizabeth, we lost you there for a moment. Did you want to yeah. say anything there? Uh, yes, yes, you, did, you didn't tell me, Mr. I was talking to myself. I was talking to myself. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a lot of. Elizabeth, oh. oh. do you want to text me yeah. your question because it's awful feedback? Oh. Okay, I've muted Elizabeth. Unfortunately, oh. it was just too That's noisy. Too much feedback. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that was that was fantastic. We have Julian. Let's see, Julian has a question. Oh, he's sent you off your speakers. It was just a bit of advice to um, kill the feedback. Would just be to switch off the speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julian. Okay. There's a lot of information there, Daniel. Yeah, there is. <laughs> it went through quite quickly. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of information and it's you know, I think even for I suppose it's especially you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Spanking brand new club setting up. You know, you, there's a lot there you could take take on board, and there's a lot I suppose that people can be working on to, as you say, log all their digital information. Um, super, super. You know, it's something we should really maybe let other clubs know. Let the clubs know about, about all this for the incoming officers, and you know, get get it moving, get get it going. It'd be fantastic. Absolutely. Um. Yes, it, it, digital succession planning is, a, is an upcoming area that is for many small businesses quite a grey area as well and legally it's quite a grey area. For example, um, many families might spend two or three thousand pounds on iTunes purchases over, over a lifetime and Upon death, they're, they're not transferable because they're lifetime licenses. So much as you may want your kids to continue to enjoy Minecraft that you bought them off your parental account, um, 
if Apple know you're, knows you're dead, that's it. And there are other examples out there that, that could be horrendous. The composer Leonard Bernstein was working on his um, memoirs and autobiography, Blue Ink, as, um, and uh, he didn't uh, give the password or anything of where it was stored to anyone, and he, he died before that could be put into the public domain. And in 22 years, no one has succeeded in breaking in to get it. Wow. Well, wow, that's something that's something to consider. Brendan Houghton, you're on the line. Did you want to say something to Daniel? Uh, no, just to say I'm sorry that uh, it took me so long to actually get online. I think it's an IT problem over here. Uh, repeated the one I had with Virgin. Uh, but uh, uh, just uh, I'm sorry I missed it, Daniel. Uh, on this succession, I, it's something that I'm very conscious of in, in Toastmasters because we don't seem to have any real institutional memory uh, because of the way we operate and that's what I did for the chair of the youth leadership is I copied everything onto a flash drive and gave it to Murray Dillon so she has everything that I have done on my computer uh, when I pass that on to her and I think we need to be conscious of that in terms of passing information on to people You're, you've probably covered it already anyway well, the bonus point would be if the information on that flash drive is organised in a way that a third party could follow it and make sense of it. Yeah, yeah, it is divided into folders and files, um, properly named and uh, keyed as well, so it makes it an awful lot easier for someone else to, to follow up. Super. Yes. Brendan, this is recorded, so you will get it. I know you've missed it at the beginning, but you will. Some super information here from Daniel. And I'll, pass you, I'll, I'll send you all out a copy of it, and it'll also be on our website. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I am conscious that I want to keep this to 45 minutes for you all. If there's any other questions, please let me know or raise your hand and I'll come to you. Super. Oh, Maura. Maura, did you raise your hand there? No? No, no, it's gone. It's gone. I think there's a um, lot of information here. I, 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 I will sort of leave on the remark that although in this presentation I have not promised to solve individual problems about how to unravel uh, a Facebook page that's been locked down to some previous president's personal profile, I can occasionally find um, things on the internet to solve some of the trickier problems but I can't guarantee results all the time to tend to everyone need, everyone's needs. Okay. And Sam, or Daniel, would you be open to people maybe emailing you on if they have individual issues, if you might be able to help them, or do you want to keep it up on Facebook, or what would you like to do? Yes, feel free to contact me if you have specific questions, and I'll, I'll do my best to field a reply. Super, Daniel. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. You can any, no Pardon? Go on. I was going to say you can contact me via email or via Facebook. Perfect. Alison, did you have something to say there? No, um, I was just, I, I was talking to someone about this the other day, about having a Facebook page and having a closed group where you actually put information, you know, where you can have documents and, and folders that you share in a Facebook closed group. And the person actually I was talking to advised me very much against it because they said Facebook owns everything if you do that. So, so where you're sharing things with the worst point. Um, I know there are various concerns about um, every, every photograph that goes on Facebook, if it's ever used in a commercial setting, Facebook I reckon that they have a right over it. Okay. But pragmatically, the clubs in my area uh, do use Facebook um, closed groups to coordinate leadership activities, and they do share documents. But for the life of me, if those documents have any value outside of the Toastmasters community that they're intended to, I'd be staggered. <laughs> this is true. Um, yeah, there's a lot of closed groups. I think people do find them useful. 
both is Julian. Um, you have to be very, very uh, careful here about um, uh, personal data, etc., things like that. If you're posting personal data, um, person's uh, name, address, any form of contact details for that person, you are um, subject to data protection. And by posting them anywhere, willy-nilly on the internet, you are at risk of being in breach. Yeah, I'd, I'd second that. The sorts of things that I've seen on um, closed group tend, tend to be advance agendas for um, the local area contest, that kind of thing, rather than membership and personal data. Super, listen, thank you all very much for participating and I know I've learned a lot from this and again this will be available to you. I'd like to say, Daniel, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom there. Um, we can all learn something from it. And thank you all very much for everyone else who's participated and I hope you've learned something too. Daniel, thanks again. All right, all the best. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Take care. Thanks. Good night all. Bye bye now. Thanks, good night. No, no. It's like the Waltons. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Waltons. Good night, John boy. Good See you next good month. Night, good next night, month is open ice. Good night, Karen. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> good night. Take care. Talk Bye. Soon. See you at the contest.